Hi, this is Julian for Pro Tools Expert. We're continuing to look at folder tracks in Pro Tools, and we've already spent a bit of time looking at basic folder tracks. Basic folder tracks are purely organizational and uh, extremely useful, but there is another version, the routing folder, which does everything that a basic folder does, but introduces some submixing uh, capabilities in the way that you're probably used to using auxiliary inputs in Pro Tools. So here, for example, I've got uh, this. If I solo these up, we can see that all of these drums are coming into this auxiliary track via this drums bus. If you're doing that, then actually it's very easy to retrospectively introduce some routing folders into your, into your pre-existing sessions. All you need to do is you just need to right-click and here you have Convert Auxiliary to Routing Folder. So not a great deal changes, but then it's very easy. As long as you know which tracks are feeding the bus that's, uh, that used to feed into that auxiliary, then you can just uh, select them and drag them all in, and then you've got your folder and you've got these handy foldering capabilities. But the really useful thing is you still have the routing, the busing, the options for uh, for doing bus processing. So, for example, I've got a channel strip here, which is doing some stuff to those drums, and it still is. Nothing much has changed, but you've introduced that handy foldering that you that you have from a basic folder, keeping your submixing as well. I can do this for the whole session. Um, over here, actually, I've got some BVs over here, and uh, here I've got an ooze bus, because, unsurprisingly, this is uh, feeding some ooze. Now, if I'm, it's reasonably clear where they're all coming from. If I want to make things simple for myself, I could just come over here, right click, and then I could just go show only assignments to ooze. If I do that, then it's, I can very quickly get rid of everything that I don't need. So it's very quick for me to then do what we did before, convert all to routing folder. And I've already got all the tracks ready to go into that routing folder. So I can quickly organize this stuff and then just... Uh, Option click to bring all that stuff back, and I'm starting to folder this session retrospectively. Let's jump ahead to a session where I've already prepped all of these folders. So here we are in this session with uh, pretty much everything put in a folder track, either a basic or a routing folder, and things are much more manageable than they were. If we uh, pop over into the edit window, we can see things are pretty manageable in there as well. If I hit Option or Alt and click on one of these, I can collapse the entire folder structure, which is handy to quickly bring stuff down. And then if I place the insertion point in any folder at all and hit Shift and F, I can quickly toggle and unfold the contents of any of these folders. Now, so far, all I've done is I've turned existing auxiliaries, which were submixing, into routing folders, which is great, but it's easy enough to create them where there is no corresponding auxiliary. For example, here, I've got a couple of acoustic guitar tracks. Now, if I hit the shortcut Command, Option, Shift, and N, that would be Control, Alt, Shift, and N on a PC, then I get the Move to New Folder dialog. And uh, if I change to a Routing Folder, and I check the Root Tracks to New Folder checkbox, then I'll call that Acoustic. Acoustics. And here we are. Now, the thing that's happened in the background there is that it's automatically created a bus and it's routed those uh, source tracks to that bus in one operation and named everything and everything's nice and tidy. Now, the useful thing about routing folders is that, as the name implies, you can route through them, but you don't have to. And that might sound a bit counterintuitive, but it can be kind of useful. So here I've got this uh, drums folder. And within that drums folder, I've got a kick drum routing folder but if you see here, what's going on is the kicks are routed to the kick bus. The kick bus is picked up by the kick routing folder, which is routed to the mix bus. All the other drums are routed to the drum bus, which goes to this drum routing folder. So what we've got is we've got all of the drum tracks are within the drum folder, but the kick drum tracks aren't routed through the drum folder. You can illustrate that easily enough using a high pass filter here on the drums submix. So if I hit play, we've got a nice full kick drum and everything else in there. But if I high pass filter the kick, the kit, 
the kick drum isn't passing through that filter. We can see that pretty clearly here in the difference between the metering, just because here we can see the kick drum and all these kick drum tracks are feeding into this kick drum routing folder, but they're not reaching this meter here. That's just the rest of the kit. But something to be aware of is that the little green audio activity meter on a folder track shows audio activity regardless of the routing. So the kick drum's showing on there, but it's not showing on the main meter on that drum's folder track. So there isn't a hard one-to-one -one relationship between which tracks are in a routing folder and which tracks are routed through that routing folder. Nice touch.